Then comes to the part where we try to run uh, the same statement, but this time accessing value of this container called y, which has not been defined. So Spider says there'll be a name error. When we run it, there is no error because we wrapped it with a protection, right? So try will detect the name error, captures it, and sends Python to the accept part of the statement block. So as expected, we actually don't see C dot, but we see D colon instead, or C colon. We don't see C colon, we see D colon. Okay, so if we did not protect it because we didn't know, right? Again, Spider says you have some problem there. And this time round, if we run it, we really see problem there because it's a name error saying that the variable y has been accessed before being initialized with a value. Okay. So we did talk about that. Uh, but sometimes it is possible that depending on the decisions, right, depending on certain conditions, depending on certain values uh, that we at program time have no knowledge of or have no certainty about. Maybe because we are asking user, which one would you like? Right? So we can say that you may like one, two or three. However, we don't know exactly which one user will choose. So in that case, it's will be it may be possible that we want to access a certain uh, variable name sometimes before all right uh, the value is being stored in so for that matter rather than having this complicated try accept to to sort of try to access the variable and if we, it should have been uninitialized then we do some recovery about it it's so cumbersome and for that matter, and for many, many other uh, very important uh, reference sanity, that means we need some integrity in describing nothingness. Python has this value called none. And it is a keyword. It is very important that we don't um, misuse it because it signals nothingness. And this nothingness is in a programmatic sense, meaning it is not empty string. It is not a zero. It is not a false, a Boolean false. It is nothing at all, no value, no value. So uh, if we just look at our previous sort of icon here, if we wanted to have this situation, label that container, why, but don't give it anything. I don't have a value yet. But I know I'm going to talk about why, right? So if you ever need to do that, and actually it's not a bad idea. Uh, oftentimes we want to initialize uh, what variable name that we will be using in subsequent program segments. We want to initialize it to something first, but yet that something cannot be one, cannot be two, cannot be any number value because they, it might be misleading it might be uh, messing up with our subsequent loops and all that. We just want to say we will use that variable. We will use that container called Y, right? So if we want to do that with nothing inside, that's exactly when we will say Y is given this value called nothingness. It almost sounds like a contradiction because we are supposed to say nothing is there, no value is there, but this value called none is a value. Right, it's a pro proper value in Python uh, that signals nothingness, that, that means nothingness. And we need this to, um, just to put it simply, we need this to sort of uh, round up the loose ends. Let's put it that way. Uh, it, it's more complicated theoretically than that. But uh, without this, there'll be a lot of loose ends that, that we need to hack around it, just like we use a try and accept just now which is very cum cumbersome and makes the a simple act of saying initialize it to emptiness right we want that but then it becomes four or five lines with try accept and all that which is very cumbersome so with this with the help of none it is great that we can now say look i'm going to use this variable name called y but for now i don't know what to put in so i'm going to put a none there and every Python programmer in the world will 
look at this and say, okay, I see that's your intention. Uh, no wonder you are talking about why subsequently. All right, now that uh, why is being discussed and all that. No, so uh, of course this is a, just just an illustration, but you know that there's really such a need. So in this case here, yeah, I'm illustrating a few things. First of all, none, and let's compare that with the state of true. Is it equal to true? The answer is false, right? So we ask Python, is this nothingness object called none? Is it the same as this value called true? And uh, the comparison outcome is uh, false. No, it is not equal. How about none? Is it comparable? Is it the same as this value called false? But just another name for it. Answer is no also. So it's very strange, right? We we uh, I, I just purposely want to show you this because none is this singularity case where it is neither true nor false, uh, which is weird because oftentimes when something is not true, it is false, but not for none. So none can be compared with true, can be compared with false, and in both cases, it will not be the same. <laughs> so it's this singularity. And... Uh, let me just copy the whole program and then we just do a single screen flip over. So uh, let me just patch up the loose ends. What is this? Invalid syntax. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Okay, good. So now um, we can run all these y equals to none print out e now value of y is none all right and we compare y1 y2 to capture the results of the comparisons we should see false and false we should see false and false so let's run that okay so now value of y is none that's correct because we assigned the value none there and let's compare is none equals to true no is none equals to false no interesting singularity case right and then we try to uh, print uh, the results of y1 and y2 and del this reserve for del is the case when we want to completely delete away the container so including the label tear away the label so we create the label by assigning a value to a container. This container is automatically created, the next available container, and we name it, we label it Y. So the labeling part is done by the equal statement, right? But what if we want to purposely delete it? What if we want to unlabel it? That means send it back to the big pool of empty containers, including de destroying the value inside. Then a simple call to DEL, right? delete the container name will do delete the container name. So DEL is a special keyword. It's pretty smart DEL. It knows about the value inside and all that. So it will just simply tear away the label and pause out the content, destroy the content digitally and sends the, the empty container back to the available pool of containers that Python can use. Okay, so this DEL was from a continuation of earlier X. If we un, un, uh, sort of un, undefine that by commenting it out, you see that we can now delete y, y1, y2, which have all been previously assigned. So they are defined. So at this point, if we try to say y equals to x plus 1, this will be an exception. Okay? Because x is, uh, x is uh, undefined now. So if we do that, we see everything as before, uh, but x is undefined. And if we were to say, well, of course, because in this program, we never define x. What if you do that? All right. Y1 is supposed to be defined, right? But after deleting Y1, we find that Y1 is no longer defined. However, if we do not, de uh, we, if we do not delete Y1, it will be able to tell that Y1 is still available, it's still referenceable we can still access the value the container is still having this label called y1 and so we are able to uh, act, uh, perform that arithmetic and if we ask what's the value of y that's 
false plus one. False goes to zero, so zero plus one is one. That's why we get one. 